Welcome to the Secrets to Mindful Health podcast. I'm your host, Beth Warren. Today we have a special guest, Sally Shinko, known as the Tahini Goddess. Sally is a Mediterranean mom on a mission. She has a line of products that are gluten-free, kosher certified, and vegan from an all-natural tahini and zero-gram sugar halva made from sesame seeds. Welcome, Sally. Hi, Beth. How are you? I'm good. So that was a really quick intro, but I'd love if you tell everyone a little bit more about your journey, what led you to be known as the Tahini Goddess and your line of products, your balance of family life and wellness and all the great things I I even follow you for. (laughs) Thank you. And thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I am Sally Shimko. I was born and raised in Israel. I moved to the U.S. about um, 13 years ago, um, and both of my kids were uh, born here in Miami. We're in Miami specifically, and um, really what started my journey is um, the biggest part of it was motherhood when I became a mom, and I had to step into the kitchen and my son my firstborn Ethan is a very very picky eater so Mm -hmm. um I had to you know come up with um a lot of creative creativity and you know everything you know has to look in a certain way so I really I decided to step into the kitchen and to um, create my own recipes and um every I started sharing everything on a blog and every single Thursday I had um, tahini Thursday because tahini was, you know, the number one item that I would always have in my pantry. So I decided to dedicate a day (laughs) every week to all my, you know, um, tahini recipes. And I truly believe, you know, that both tahini and halva um, which are made of sesame seed, as you said, is um, such a great way to enjoy, you know, um, eating vegetables and to enjoy, you know, eating um, healthy eating, really what we call. Um, yeah, and so- let's actually explain for people who don't know what tahini, you say it so nice in your Israeli accent, um, or tahini paste, people might know that more in uh, America. What exactly is it? And Let's start there. So the sim- the, to describe it as simple as it is, it, tahini is ground sesame seeds. Um, and halva is um, the same. It's made from sesame seeds, but it's sweet and it's in a different texture. The tahini is more, as you said, like as a paste texture, as a nut butter. And halva, Mm -hmm. specifically mine, and the reason I say specifically mine, because both my tahini and halva have a very special texture that um, we can talk about, but um, I really call my halva the Mediterranean cookie dough, because it's more (laughs) of in a cookie dough texture. Um, So yeah, but both products are very, very versatile. And you can use them in so many different ways. That's probably my favorite part. About that it. makes so much sense why you try to develop that for your son, who you're saying was a picky eater and you have to try to get him to eat something. So it makes a lot more sense why it would be a tahini paste, which would have protein, healthy fats. Like you said, it's versatile. It encourages eating vegetables. So I totally understand that. What's so intriguing to me was that off of Instagram, you have such a literally beautiful presence, but also you seem like such a natural in the kitchen. You're comfortable. Your kids are there. So it's so helpful for others to hear that you got started in the kitchen later in life. Yes, so much later. I have to say growing up in Israel and my background, you know, it's all about no matter where we're from, because the background is so, uh, you know, diverse in, um, Mm -hmm. in Israel. And I have so many cuisines, different cuisines in my house that I grew up on, but all of them is like really Mediterranean Um, food and the number one really is always food food brings everyone together food you know gather everyone around the table so that's something I grew up on you know eating homemade food 
but I have to say I wasn't um, one of those that, you know, not like my girl, for example, or my daughter, she loves baking and she loves cooking. And she always asked me if I want help in the kitchen and really they get, she got into the kitchen naturally um, versus my son that I got him into the kitchen because I thought it will be a good way to expose him to different types of food. And, you know, maybe we'll give him the, the chance to decide to try, you know, something different. But as a, as a child myself, I was not one of those that, you know, helping my mom, wanting to bake or cook. I always had homemade food and I always knew, you know, the importance of, you know, food and eating, you know, healthy, lots of vegetables and lots of fresh food and seasonal food. But um, I really discovered the kitchen, like you say, so much later as a mom. Mm -hmm. And um, all my recipes are five ingredients, five minutes prep, I mess love that. free. <laughs> they were born for moms that want to know what they eat. They want it to be delicious. They want the kids, you know, to eat healthy food as well. But it has to be fast simple <laughs> and uh, mess free. That's my kitchen rules. <laughs> oh, I love the mess free one because that's hard to come by. So you develop this whole line of products. You also have really interesting combos. So everybody knows I have tasted Sally's varieties of teeny paste and they are amazing. And I'm not kidding. When I see you just eat it by the spoonfuls, and now I see that you developed a pouch, literally to squeeze in your mouth. Some people could see that and be like, oh, I would never do that. But I'm telling you, it's that good. So how did you come to develop the combinations and those flavors? So the combinations really were born long time before I even dreamed or thought that I'm going to, you know, manufacture tahini on my own. <laughs> I mm -hmm. used to make them in my own kitchen. Um, every single Thursday, I'll make a different flavor of tahini. And I, I came up with um, baking recipes and you name it, really. Anything out there, I, there's so much, there's so many recipes that I used to share every single Thursday. And when um, the reason really uh, why I decided to create my own tahini is because when people used to go to the store and buy tahini to try my recipes, I got really um, bad reactions from people. Oh. Really, really, um, the, the reviews about the tahini that they found at the store, even if it's the same one that I used to use, were like, the, how do you like it? It doesn't taste right. And the texture, there is like um, lots of like cement in the bottom. Like if you know tahini, for, yes. you know, for our listeners that know tahini, they know that in the bottom, normally there is like a big, you know, chunk of uh, paste. Um, for those of you who doesn't know, I can explain that um, as we said, tahini is made out of sesame seeds, halva as well. And the reason that my own moment back was when I decided to visit other factories um, to see why really there is such difference between, you know, different tahini and why there is um, different in texture. And when I realized that um, all the tahini out there are made in modern machinery that, mm. first of all, kills all the benefits because um, when you put sesame seeds and even nuts to grind them in a modern machinery, in a massive one, and you do it, you know, with um, high quantities, um, it warms up. And it really kills all the benefits. You follow me for a while. So, you know, the number one that I preach from day one on my um, Instagram page is food with benefits. You know, there is mm. so many incredible benefits to so many, you know, delicious food that our body can enjoy. And it's a win-win um, situation, of course. Um, but we don't know so many products on the shelf out there that, we think, oh, the ingredients looks amazing and what a great marketing and the packaging is, it looks so good, but no one stopped for a second to think about the process of the product. That is huge. I, I, I just felt the chills to that because, and that's what I wanted to segue into. 
we just started off talking about you getting in the kitchen later in life and really doing it mostly for your son and then finding this niche with tahini because of, you know, nutritionally for him, it would have been beneficial. Plus you knew the quality and you use that expertise, but what you're getting at, just so you know, is that you segued into this whole wellness vibe that feels super authentic and you share a lot of your wellness little habits, tahini or otherwise, your workouts, all that balance. And it seems like from what you're saying, and I would love for you to expand that through your world of tahini, you got into wellness or you started recognizing the benefits of wellness. Absolutely. It's such like an organic way, you know, it's like, it's one of those things that everything is so synced that you don't know what lead to the other. But absolutely, you know, my entire, you know, perspective started changing once I started creating my own recipes, because as you said, each recipe, I wanted to have benefits behind it, health benefits, you know, for especially if you have a, a kid that is a picky eater and, you know, you know, he only gets this one meal this um, one a day. Or if, exactly. Or if you, you know, my daughter used to be a juice lover. So, you know, juicing the fruit and the veggies, I really got into it because I'm like, what is the point of buying those really expensive juices at the store and they have zero vitamins and minerals left after the process um, that they went through, you know? And I think um, it's really interesting that your, your step into the kitchen unfolded. Your start basically was getting down and dirty with the food, so to speak, and seeing maybe the value in that, the benefits, and then how that opened up into being more nutritious, which is what they do show in research or one suggestion to have kids quote unquote, eat healthier is actually get them in the kitchen, get them cooking, get them having fun. It's just amazing to see your journey with it and how that expanded. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. And so that really was my big all moment when I realized that these uh, beautiful sesame seeds that contain so many minerals and so much vitamins and all the good fatty acids and really um, we're not getting it from um, those, you know, that type of process of going through a modern machinery. Um, the second reason was when I realized that um, they don't separate the peels. So that's mm -hmm. why my tahini, the texture and the halva are so different because all that paste and the reason why I always say my tahini is not a sesame paste, it's liquid gold because there is no paste at the bottom. It, it's literally um, like a butter texture. We remove all the sesame skin completely, which um, first of all, it's much harder to digest. So no one wants you know, the sesame skin. Same goes with nuts, you know, a, a lot of, uh, for example, with almonds, if you eat too many of them with the skin on, it becomes toxic in your body. So it's hmm. super important to know what you're eating, especially if you consider that product a healthy product, you know, product right. that's and supposed if you're to planning benefit to eat, my body. If you're planning to eat a lot of it, or this is what your kids are eating, you want to maximize the benefits. It's also notably not free, obviously, because technically speaking, it's from sesame seeds. So you're still able to get all those healthy fats and nutrients from it. But I actually want to kind of take a sidestep. I wouldn't even call a step back because I'm hearing all this and I'm also a businesswoman and I'm hearing how much you're invested in this, even, even physically, even mentally, how much that takes. And I, you keep referencing your two kids. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. how, and this is my biggest question I get, how you manage the work-life balance. How did that factor in as something you did later in life with kids and a family? Um, it's one of those things, you know, when people is, I, I get so many DMs, I'm sure you too, on Instagram from so many incredible ladies. It's, I want to do my own thing. I want to get ready. What do I do? And it's one of those things. It's the same when I used to ask before I had my own kids, like, are, am I ready for a baby You and a business, a baby? It's all, it's all of those things that are unpredictable. You can't get ready for it. And balance is something you need to create daily. It's not just going to happen. It's a daily work with everything, especially, you know, with having your own business as well. 
I really truly believe with my type of business, um, because I had a, diff a different business before when I was much younger and before my kids, this time it was completely different because the business, the product was born out of a necessity and the business grew um, very, very organically. Every product that I come up with is because I felt the need for it or a lot of my followers were asking me to recommend something and I couldn't find something that is good enough to recommend. So I decided to make my own. And, um, and in the beginning, when I just started as a mom, I was very overwhelmed. I found myself crying in the kitchen, uh, not in the kitchen, in the shower. Yes, we <laughs> all have those moments. Um, because I really didn't know how to deal with, um, balancing at all. And in the beginning, in the beginning, my kids used to say a lot like, oh, you work all the time or you're busy or you're going again. And a lot of comments that I didn't deal with in the past because they're growing up. So they understand more. So they, they know also to say what they think and kids has no filters. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, so it's one of those things that you definitely, you go through it. It's not easy. Um, and it never gets easy, but it gets more manageable. And, um, I think overall, my family is such a big, big part of my, um, business because it's a small business, because it's a female owned. you know, everyone has to, to help. So there's such a big part of it. So I think it's also important to show them the struggle of, you know, of life and the struggle of, you know, um, prioritizing what's important for you and timing and family and work. And um, I grew up with, with both parents to still work until this day. So I think, you know, I learned so much from them and um and I'm happy that I'm able to, to do the same with my kids. So, yes, and to and, uh, and lead those, by example. Yes. So in those hard moments, that's what I try to remember, you know, um, the purpose. <laughs> Absolutely. And, I think I really appreciate what you said, because the thing is, is it's like any transition, any transition, when you're going to move, when you're getting married, when you're going to a new school, you're starting a business that comes with a lot of overwhelming everything because everything gets turned on its head. And what we're talking about here is when there's also kids involved that you're responsible for and you have to take into account their needs. It's not just you. And it just takes an adjustment for everyone. I feel, and this is what I feel like does make us Honestly, you're like a, a super mom. Sometimes I cringe when I hear that because I know my struggles and I feel like I don't want people to get the wrong impression, which is one reason for this podcast that even though we make it look superhuman, it is not without crazy challenges. And for me, it's that you all have to just be communicating and paying attention to your kids and allowing time to unfold. As long as, like you said, your priorities are in order you just recognize there has to be a transition like in anything. And I think you phrased it perfectly. First of all, two things that you said, you wake up every day figuring out the balance because it's a daily thing. You think you could have it together, but then the next day comes and you have to find a new shift in your balance. And I actually call it more juggling. I don't think it's balanced because I feel like that means things are on equal footing and it's not, it's that one ball is a little lower, Absolutely. but it never quite drops. It never I quite drops it. that it's ball juggling. and then it goes up. <laughs> it's juggling yes. and, and you're just trying to catch the balls and, but the other one then goes up and you just give things and shift your attention. Um, but you also said that it becomes more manageable, which is a big thing. You never get perfect. You never know what could come up, but you are better able to manage it. And I think that actually ultimately comes from within you, no longer the right. circumstance. Yes. You know, there's, first of all, there's a lot of learning. So, you know, after a while, a lot of things that you just started doing suddenly with, you know, learning and with getting more experience um, and knowledge, then you can have, you know, different tools to help you to manage it all. 
And um, yes, and you know, hard work pays off in the end of it. So if you work hard, if you believe in what you do, if you're consistent, um, then you'll thrive in the end, you know, and it's the most important. Said. Beautifully said. I think it also gives us a rewarding feeling and helps us show up better because it is something that we're developing and it's it's also something that you've developed that's great for other people. So it's even more rewarding and great for your family. And you do include your family. It is, it is something like you said that everyone ends up having a hand in. That's impossible to just be a mom and not have everyone in your, literally in your food. So <laughs> I, I totally hear that. But if you could take us through now your wellness routine that you share all the time, um, you have a whole, you have a routine and that's important also in terms of prioritizing self-care. That's another element that people can't fathom. Wait, you have a business and your kids and you exercise and you drink lemon water. And what are these prebiotics that you came out with too? <laughs> yes. So first of all, knowing no excuses, that's my attitude. And from day one, you know, even when uh, my daughter was a, a newborn, I used to wake up an hour and a half before her to go to work out, you know? And, and back then I wasn't even working yet. I was on complete maternity leave, you know? But I knew that if I'm not gonna get it down early in the morning, then it's not gonna happen throughout my day. So no excuses, that's the number one. And making sure, like you say, planning your day ahead um, every day to make sure that you can, you know, fit everything that, um, that you have to do that day in a way that, you know, is not going to stress you out. If something is stressing you out, it's not worth it. Um, I always say it. So if you know that squeezing in 30 minutes that day will stress you out completely and ruin the entire day, those are the days that I will give up. But if I know that I can wake up an hour and a half before my family, um, you know that because you follow me, um, but I do it every single day. And I know that that one, one hour and a half is important for my morning meditation, for my lemon water, for my um, workout, then I will give up my sleep or I will give up a night out, you know, before. And I will make sure that the most important things that, you know, makes me a better mom, a better wife, a better businesswoman, that they, I will make them happen. And that's, it's all about mindset and attitude. Because I can give you a million excuses why I need to keep on sleeping that one hour in the morning and why I cannot do this and this and this and that. And in the end of the day, um, it's my decision, right? It's, you know, um, so I think it's very important to, to have a list of, you know, three things that you do for yourself that um, you have to do them no matter what. And it can be the little tiny things, like you said, preparing my lemon water in the morning or, you know, doing my, my meditation, doing my workout. Um, and it makes a big, big difference because the days that I don't do it or that I couldn't find, you know, the strength in me to continue, um, then I really feel the difference. And it's it's major. I think that's the key. You said to start off just a list of three things that you feel you want to do for yourself. Then from there, first of all, understand it comes from a level of sacrifice, even if it's that night out or something along those lines it does come with an element of sacrifice. And then it comes with an element of Oh, I have to wake up an hour and a half earlier. I always say as moms, the only way to get things done is to create more hours in the day. That's you have to literally. It's the only way. <laughs> yeah. So I think that that was a huge tip. So tell me about the prebiotics and how that developed into your repertoire of products from the team. Yes. You know, it, it's funny. I actually started with the prebiotic. It used to be, um, Inulin used to be one of the first products that I uh, started with um, selling on my website and also sharing it daily. Um, I, I discovered it through my pediatrician 
with my son uh, many, many years back because he, my pediatrician swears by inulin um, generally, but especially for kids. Um, and I, that's how I discovered and started experimenting with it. Uh, the reason I, for those of you who don't know, inulin is um, indigestible fiber. Um, really short, what does indigestible fiber mean? In a very simple example, let's say you're eating five, you're eating broccoli now. Um, your when it gets into your digestive system, your digestive system knows to recognize it and it, it's sending it to, you know, the part where we digest um, fiber and vegetables. When you drink my prebiotic, my uh, organic blue agave inulin, it's one ingredient only. It's made from the roots of the um, agave plant, the blue agave plant. And because it's indigestible fiber, when you drink it, your digestive system say, hey, what is it? I, I, I don't recognize it. This is indigestible. So it's sending it directly to your gut. And we all know by now that everything starts in our gut, everything, of course, our mood, our, you know, it's, if it's cortisol levels, if it's digestion, skin, hair, nails, everything, weight loss. So um, really what it does, it feeds your gut bacteria from the beginning until the end. It's also very beneficial for your immune system because it feeds the probiotics in your system and makes your immune system much stronger. And it keeps you satisfied for a long time. And it's, there's so many amazing health benefits because when your gut function and you know the best, then everything is improving. That's so amazing. And, and just to follow you and watch how you use these and implement them authentically in your life is just so refreshing. You totally give off a positive vibe, which I love. What could we look forward to you doing in the future? How can we help support you? Where can we get your products? Oh, thank you so much. Um, my products, we have a store locator. We are at Whole Foods, um, not wow. nationwide. So it depends on where you are. Um, hopefully um, nationwide soon, but we're going to add more and more regions throughout the country. Um, we, but we have many other incredible, you know, small businesses throughout the U.S. and Canada that I would love um, for you to support locally. We're also um, at thetechinigoddess.com and at thetechinigoddess on Instagram. Um, I'm always going to come out with new products to make us all, <laughs> to make us yes, healthy uh, health and enjoyable. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so. And very practical. And we'll follow you on Instagram at the Tahini Goddess anyway. And also watch what <laughs> unfolds with your product line and your wellness life. So wishing you the best of luck. For more, follow me on Instagram at Beth underscore Warren or at the Mindful Health Pod on TikTok or Instagram. Thanks for joining us, Sally. Thank you so much for having me.